so now we're going to be focusing on the nature of fruits right uh, if you're in grade 11 this is your video even if you're in grade 12 this is actually your video because nature of roots go all the way up to grade 12. anyways let's get down with it so we're going to be focusing on um i'm going to just show you the the nature of roots the laws of nature of roots if it's called laws i don't know but we're just going to be doing that and we're going to be doing um some examples on how to solve problems using nature of roots right so now uh the one thing that you need to note is this so we have we normally use a discriminant when you talk of nature of roots this is called a discriminant discriminant right so if discriminant is equals to b squared minus 4ac i'm sure you're familiar now with this b squared minus 4ac right which is found inside your, your quadratic formula right so we normally use that b squared minus 4ac so what we normally say is discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac right so um the the rules or the laws whatever you may you call it are as follows when the discriminant when b squared minus 4ac combined when b when the discriminant is equals to zero the nature of roots what is the nature of roots the roots are real uh, rational and equal right so when the discriminant is equal to zero when you are going to substitute in the discriminant of equals b squared minus 4ac right and you find the answer to be zero and the discriminant is equal to zero then those root those roots are real rational and equal right so let's say for example now the discriminant is greater than zero so the nature of those roots are it depends by the way if the discriminant is greater than zero and the discriminant is a perfect square right if it's a perfect square so something that is a perfect square is if you put a square root of nine it gives you three right if you put a square root of four it gives you two right so that is a perfect square that is a perfect square nine is a perfect square because it gives you a a number a, to, a, 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 a number that doesn't have decimals right so it's a perfect square so if you have a discriminant that is greater than zero and it's considered to be a perfect square then the nature of those roots are they're going to be real they're going to be rational which means they can be expressed as a fraction right and they're going to be unequal so unequal so those roots are going to be unequal so let's say for example now you are having your your discriminant so we use a different color so let's say your discriminant in this case is greater than zero but it's not not perfect perfect square right so not a perfect square so what do i mean by that if you have a root of two you really honestly you will get a decimal if you want to find out you can punch this in your calculator you won't get a perfect number right so if this can't be expressed in a perfect number which is root of two then uh it, it's not a perfect square we don't consider it as a perfect square or you have a root of eight right root of eight is also not a perfect square right so such roots um we say that these roots are real first of all they are irrational irrational is something that cannot be expressed as a fraction and they're unequal i hope you can see this number this sorry these these letters here real irrational and unequal right so that is the nature of these roots and then uh, lastly we are having roots that um so let's say for example we have a discriminant that is less than zero so the nature of these roots when discriminant is less than zero say for example you're substituting a discriminant it's b squared minus four four ac right and the answer that you get is negative so what, what this means is if this discriminant is negative let's say it's negative two right it means now that in your square root you're having a negative two so if your square root has a negative um number inside then there's no solution for this thing there's no solution right no solution meaning it's non-real so you, your calculator will give you an error right so if you are talking of non-real which means the discriminant is less than zero so when the discriminant is less than zero your nature of roots are non-real real right 
and then um, lastly when your discriminant is equals to zero so when the discriminant is equals to zero discriminant equals to zero so when the discriminant is equals to zero it can be let's say for example uh, you substitute in your b squared minus 4 ac right and you get a number of 1 for example right this one it says that your discriminant is equals to 1 so discriminant is equals to 1 um, it's not equals to 0 right so but if you get an answer of equals to 0 then it means now that your nature of roots are going to be real first of all a uh, rational why are we saying rational because discriminant is equals to zero i mean zero is actually a rational number it is it, it can be expressed as a fraction right because zero there's actually one at the bottom right punch your calculator and say zero divided by one it's just going to be zero right so it is actually a number that can be expressed as a fraction so hence we are saying it's rational and the roots are actually equal what am i writing so the roots of discriminant that is equals to zero they are equal so these roots are equal right so these are the nature of roots so just in summary i'm just gonna quickly write them down in here so i hope you're still tuning in so that you really understand this so when the discriminant is greater than zero or let me just use a um smaller size so when the discriminant is greater than zero and it's a perfect square then the nature of roots are real rational unequal unequal roots right when the discriminant is greater than zero but it's not a perfect square right then the nature of roots are real irrational and unequal right so um say for example now when the discriminant is equals to zero so what are we going to get we we'll, let me just use it so when the discriminant is greater than sorry when the discriminant is equals to zero right when the discriminant is equals to zero the nature of roots are going to be real are going to be rational and the roots are going to be equal right and then when discriminant is less than zero then your roots are none oops why am i saying none none real right so your nature of roots are none real i hope you got all these four rules down right um anyways now let's get down to writing down some problems or solving problems rather than not writing down solving problems under your nature of roots say for example you're having a question let me just write a it says the question discuss the nature of roots without solving the equation so you're having a question like this it says discuss the nature of roots without solving the equation and one of the examples would be let me just use okay one of the examples would be you having x squared minus minus x rather minus x plus 3 equals to 0 say you're having x squared minus x plus 3 equals to 0 you are asked to discuss the nature of these roots so the first thing you're going to do is going to write a discriminant discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac right and your b value in this case is equal to minus 1 right it's this one here and then your a value is equal to 1 which is this one here and then your c is this one here so your c is equal to 3 so you're going to substitute that in your equation so it's going to be your b is minus 1 all squared minus 4 into your a is 1 your c is 3 right and then here it's going to be 1 minus 12 right and then your discriminant is going to be cost minus 11 so discriminant minus 11 so remember um in the previous rules i said when a discriminant is less than zero it's none real right so in this case our discriminant it's it's negative 11 so meaning that when you just describe the nature of this um uh, 
this problem here you can just gonna say none real roots right so just gonna write none real let's try out another problem under the same under the same question right so i'm just gonna erase here um so just gonna try out another problem under the same question so that we we really get to understand on how to to discuss the nature of roots of problems say we are having 2x squared plus 6 is equals to minus 7x right so the first thing you want to do here is you want to write down your equation in standard form right remember the standard form it's ax squared plus bx plus c right so we're just going to transpose this minus 7 to the other side you have 2x squared plus 6 plus 7x equals to 0 then in standard form it's going to be 2x squared plus 7x plus 6 equals to 0 right so and then from here you write your discriminant which is equals to b squared minus 4ac right of which your value of a is equal to 2 your value of b is equal to 7 your value of c is equal to 6 so you're going to substitute that so it's going to be equal to your value of b which is 7 squared minus 4 our a value is 2 and then our c value is 6 right so it's discriminant you're going to punch this into your calculator punch this into your calculator you have to get something like one yeah that's the answer that i got in my calculator please check it out i got one so if the discriminant is is actually equals to one remember uh, previously i said to you that if the discriminant is greater than zero and it's a perfect square if a pe perfect square then that discriminant will have the nature of roots will be real rational and unequal right so this applies to this problem why does it apply to this problem here it's because one is actually a perfect square why am i saying that if you say the root of one it's going to give you one so it's basically a perfect square so hence these nature of roots apply so what you need to do is just going to write this answer and write down that the roots are real rational and unequal so that's what you're going to, you're going to say therefore um, the screen is equal to 1 and the roots are roots are real rational and unequal so that's how we're going to solve this problem here under this question here of discussing the nature of roots without solving the equation right let's do another problem which is more interesting under the same question right um, so that we really understand on how we go about the nature of roots, which is very important, guys. Um, it's really important that we know the nature of roots because, as I said earlier on, you're going to be doing the same thing in grade 12. So if you are in grade 12 watching this video, you're doing yourself a favor because you really need to know nature of roots. So let's say, for example, you're having this one. Uh, I like this one. This is interesting. So it's x squared plus p squared is equals to 2px, right? So as I said, you write down in standard form if it's like this, and then you're just going to transpose this to the other side. You have x squared plus p squared minus 2px is equals to 0, right? And then x squared minus 2px plus p squared right why am i writing this i'm writing it in standard form right remember the standard form it's ax squared plus bx plus c right so um now what you're going to do is you're going to write down our discriminant remember we need to discuss the nature of this of these roots for this problem here so we're going to say um the discriminant is equals to b squared minus 4ac right um let me remove this so we already know what b is what a is what c is right so i'm just going to write the discriminant equals to in b squared i'm going to write minus 2p right if you didn't know it the, the the b is always the coefficient of x right so in this case it's minus 2p you take it as it is so it's minus 4 into our a value it's equals to 1 right and our c value is actually p squared right this is our c value right so um and then from here um minus 2p all squared is going to give you 4p squared and then this if you multiply it's going to give you minus 4p squared so if you say 4p squared minus 4p squared is basically zero right so in this case your discriminant is equals to zero so when a discriminant is equals to zero if you remember the 
the, 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 the rules or laws that I told you earlier on is that when the discriminant is equal to zero, your nature of roots are real, rational, and equal. Right? So your nature of roots are real, rational, and equal. So what I want you to do under this question, so we're not done, we're still going to continue. Under this question, please try out this problem here. Oops, let me just use a different thingy. Please try out this problem here. Um, under the same question, as I say. So you're just going to try out 2x squared plus 6 is equals to minus 7x. So under this question, please discuss the nature of the roots for this problem here without solving the equation. Please write it down now as we are about to do another question so that you don't forget, right? So please write this question down and um, ask any questions that you would have under this uh, problem here in the comment section if maybe you struggle. Anyways, let's continue um, doing another interesting question under the nature of roots. So let's say for example now, um, I'm just going to say B, for which values of M will the following just going to say FF, right? Actually, let me just write in full. The following have real roots. So in this question, I'll be changing only this portion here. Let me just indicate it. I'll be changing this portion here. Oops. Um, I'll be changing this portion. Please take notes. For this one, I'm just going to say, for which values of M will the following have real roots? So you're focusing on real roots. Remember the, the, the laws or rules, right, of nature of roots? We said that if roots are real, the discriminant has to be greater than zero, right? Or when the discriminant is greater or equals to zero, basically. That's how you need to write it. But um, in basic form, you say the discriminant is, is greater than zero. Roots are always real in that case. Or when a discriminant is equal to zero, roots are, are actually real when this happens, right? But we have to combine the two. We have to combine this greater than and we have to combine this equal sign, right? Hence, I say it, the discriminant has to be greater and equals to zero. So you can't just write down this uh, individual um, problems here. So in this case, we're just going to say the discriminant is greater than or equals to zero, right? Then we're going to find out the values of M, right? So, say for example, uh, the problem that you are given is uh, x squared plus 6x plus M equals to zero, right? And then now, we want to identify that. So the discriminant is greater or equal to zero, right? So it's b squared minus 4ac is greater or equals to 0, right? So what is our b? Our b is equal to 6, this one here. So it's 6 all squared minus 4. Our a is 1. And then our c is m, right? So it's greater or equals to 0. So 6 squared is 36 minus. So this 4 will multiply the 1 and the m is going to be minus 4m greater or equals to 0. And then we transpose this 36 to the other side, you have minus 4m greater or equals to minus 36, right? So let me do it here. So we have minus 4m greater or equals to minus 36, right? And then we divide by minus 4, divide by minus 4. Um, whenever you divide an inequality, it changes, right? It faces the opposite direction. So it's going to be less than or equals to 36 divided by... Uh, minus 4 is just going to give you 9, right? So this is your answer. M must be less than or equals to 9. But um, you want to test that, right? You want to check if maybe that is actually true, right? They're saying, for which values of M will the following values have real roots? So real roots is any value that is greater than 0 or equals to 0, right? So let's check. Let's test this. When m is less than or equals to 1, you will have real roots. That's what this solution says, right? So let's test that. Um, say now, uh, so I'm just going to write check. Uh, check. 
Alright, so now let's check that. I'm just gonna be substituting in this um using this equation, right? Or you can just say um discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. I'm just gonna be substituting the discriminant. And if the discriminant gives me a solution that is equal to zero or greater than zero, then this is true, right? Or if the discriminant gives me, you know, let's just substitute so that you, you, you understand what I mean. So b squared minus 4ac, right? What is our b? Remember our b is this 6 here, so it's going to be 6 squared minus 4. Our a value is 1. Our c is m. But in this case, m can be equal to 9 or any value that is less than 9, right? That's what the solution says. Let's say our m is, is actually 9. The solution that you're going to get, punch your calculator and check the solution. The solution that you have to get there is 0, right? So it means now that the discriminant is equal to 0. And when the discriminant is equal to 0, it will give you real roots. So that that gives you that clarity that actually this solution is correct. But to prove it more, you can substitute any value of m, minus 4 into 1. Let's say m now it's not this 9. Let's just substitute any value because we said m must be less than or equals to 9, right? Let's substitute a value that's less than 9, it's um, 8, right? And the answer that I'm getting in my calculator is 4, right? So this tells me that, okay, if I'm getting a 4, which means the discriminant is equal to 4. So when the discriminant is equal to 4, it's actually real, right? Let's try out something different. Uh, x squared minus 4 into 1. Now, let's try out a value that is actually greater than 9, right? Because we are told that m must be less than or equal to 9 for us to get real roots. Let's just try out 10 for an example. Punch that in your calculator. You'll notice that you're going to get negative 4. So what does this what does this mean actually? This means now that the roots are not real. When the discriminant is equal to minus four, the roots are not real. So this answer is actually correct. M being less than or equals to nine is the correct answer. Let me remove all these things here. So our solution is correct. M is definitely less than or equals to nine, right? Um, we've proven that by doing these checks here. Always try out these checks if you want, um, or you can just omit them. Now let's uh, let me just give you a a problem under this question because it's important that you also try out yourself and uh, see if you are understanding the question rather than just uh, taking what I'm saying. But just try out yourself and see if you are really understanding this um, question here. So try out the this problem here. Say you have mx squared plus mx plus m is equal to 3. So answer this question using this equation here, right? And let me know in the comments what you are getting. It's actually an interesting problem. Let me know in the comments if you are getting the right answer. If you are not, let me know also. I will do this problem here and post the video, right? So now let's do another another question if you haven't subscribed please subscribe thank you so much uh if you have if you haven't please subscribe to the channel i would really appreciate that anyways let's get down to this so now say the roots i said that i'm gonna change this the roots now let's say they um equal let's say roots are equal equal roots so say now the, the question says that for which values of a, m will the following have equal roots, right? So um, let me just try out the problem like this one, x squared plus 2m equals to 8x. So now we want a situation where um, we have equal roots. And for you to have equal roots, the discriminant must be equal to 0. That's the condition discriminant is equal to zero for you to have equal roots. Please note that. Um, for us to solve this, we first need to write it down in standard form, right? So it's going to be x squared plus 2m minus 8x is equal to zero. x squared minus 8x plus 2m equals to zero, right? And then now, 
it's in standard form so now you can write out discriminant it must be equals to zero remember that so b squared minus 4ac is equals to zero our b is actually minus 8 so it's going to be minus 8 all squared minus 4 and our a value is 1 our c value is 2m right so it's equals to zero right so um let me remove this so now this punch it in your calculator you're going to get 64 right so it's going to be 64 minus uh you multiply this with this you get minus 8m it's equals to zero then you transpose 64 to the other side right um 64 to the other side you're going to get minus 8m is equals to minus 64 then you divide by minus 8, divide by minus 8, your m value is equal to 8, right? 64 divide by, please punch through your calculator, don't think, you know, or don't use a brain, please. I know you know the answer. So m is equal to 8, right? You can do your checks. I've shown you how to do the checks on whether or not this is the exact answer, the correct answer, please do your checks. Um, otherwise, for this problem here, we are done with this one way we have equal roots right um, so this is the answer let me also give you a problem to do under this specific question where now we want to find the value of m but with equal roots right so try out this problem here of x squared minus mx plus 2x plus 1 is equals to zero so try out this one here under this specific question right now let me change the question and say non row right because we did for real roots we did for equal roots now let's do for non real roots right so let me change here and say non real non real roots so let's say now we want to identify the value of m right uh will for which values of m will the following have non real roots so we want to identify values of m when we are having non real roots hope you're following guys if you're still watching anyways so to solve this we let's say for example the problem you're given you're given x squared minus 6x is equals to m right the first step is to write it in standard form so you transpose the m to the other side you have x squared minus 6x minus m equals to zero so it is in standard form so you're just going to write down so for non-real roots remember i said for non-real discriminant is is less than zero so you just want to write it down discriminant less than zero and then uh you b squared minus 4ac it's less than zero right so what's your b our b it's this minus six here so it's going to be minus six all squared minus four into our a value it's one our our c value it's minus m right so it's less than zero this is less than by the way so six squared um minus six all squared is going to give you 36 and then this multiplied together is going to give you plus 4m it's less than zero and then you transpose this 36 to the other side you will have 4m less than minus 36 right excuse me and then you divide by four both sides right divide by four both sides then you're going to get m being less than minus nine so this is going to be your solution of this problem here hope you've been following um, I think we are done with these questions here. Let me just leave you with a problem under this specific question, right? I hope you're enjoying. If you're not, let me know in the comment section uh, on what you're struggling with. I uh, will help you out. So let's try out this problem under this specific question. x squared plus mx plus 4 equals to 3x, right? Try out this problem here under this specific question. Let me know in the comment section if you are enjoying it or if you're struggling some way. I will help you out. I hope you've been watching all videos under equations and inequalities. This is the last part of the topic of equations and inequalities. Once you are done with nature of roots, you are done with the topic. If you haven't watched other videos, just check in the description um, of this video. You will see the list of all the links to those specific 
videos under this topic of equations and inequalities if you also didn't do exponents check out some of the videos in the channel under exponents you'll be sorted out thank you so much for watching i really appreciate it